Hello, this is Dread from Last Epic Builds. In today's video topic, we're going to be doing another community showcase build. This is going to be Besties Totem Shaman. So, Totem Shaman has been a very lackluster archetype for a very long time now. Uh, I I do not I do not know a time in the game where totems were actually viable enough to actually serve as their own damage source but thanks to the recent changes this patch i.e the minion power changes where at level 100 you have 40 percent more minion uh, more damage and 40 percent less damage taken it seems like as though that's enough of a buff to make totems viable now this is a crit totem build he's doing crit storm totem and crit thorn totem for most of his damage he's running frenzy totem for spamming and then he's running the thorn totem on hit idols to proc his thorn totem so he does not have to spend mana for them now i believe that he is uh he's running a lot of damage on this build but you could actually get a lot more damage if you went with a two-handed staff instead of a wand and a uh, shield but he wanted to push arena with this which he did get to wave 287 with this build which is kind of amazing considering that we all thought totems were kind of trashy up until this point so it's actually very amazing the work he's done here today by uh, making totems viable again so pretty much he just went full crit he went with to uh, with all the new totem adaptive damage he just uh, managed to take advantage of the minion power nodes uh, the crit just makes it so that it's a lot more buttery smooth ailment totems are kind of slow Low. so this like this definitely makes clearing feel a lot better uh so he's going with the normal shaman setup where you go for endurance instead of hp stacking because you have none of the endurance stuff i mean none of the hp stacking stuff so he's stacking as much endurance as possible he's stacking uh block as well since he's using a one-hander and a shield uh he's also running tornado to actually proc lightning which will proc his uh thorn totems on uh automatically and he's also running the lightning inside of the sh shaman tree the lightning if you've cast a spell recently for even more hits to make sure and guarantee that there is a 100 percent uptime on thorn totem so he doesn't have to pay the insane mana cost for them so he is using the thorn totem on hit idols so this is not a cheap build uh, as we were having a conversation earlier about the build also by the way i'm sick i'm sorry but uh we were having a conversation about the build and he was saying that pretty much this build is kind of expensive because you're going to need to get your totems crit chance up before the build feels buttery smooth you need a lot of like prerequisites like thorn totem like totem uh, base critical strike chance you need all these things make the build feel viable so he is also running the cone node on thorn totems so thorn totems if you did not know it shoots a bunch of projectiles but only one of them can hit the enemy at a time like they can't shotgun sadly but apparently from what i've seen on footage so far and what he's uh, told me it seems like the shotgun no i mean the cone nodes are a lot better overall for clear in general because it makes the the actual thorns kind of like I, I don't know it, it makes it a lot more reliable while the thorns if they're shoot all the way out it's kind of like not really reliable if that makes sense so the the cone is assisting us here usually you wouldn't take that node because you can't shotgun but in this special case where he's trying to plaster the entire screen with totems then it actually kind of works here because it leads to a lot of clear this uh this build actually has a lot more clear than i thought it would just throw down some thorn totems and bam the whole screen is cleared need some more single target throw down a frenzy totem need even more single target throw down a uh, I mean, throw down a storm totem. Absolutely amazing, I think. I, I think this build overall is very strong and could uh, push really high in arena. So far, he's like I said, he got to 287, but he could push very much farther if he just had some better gear. But this is not a cheap build, mind you. So I would heavily suggest uh, having some of the prerequisite items beforehand before actually making this build. With that being said, thank you all for watching. Let's uh, Let's get into the skills, shall we? All right, here we are in the skills here in the handy dandy build planner he's provided me with. So we have a 22 thorn totem, so he does have a plus two to thorn totems. He takes the four points to forested expanse, so he gets up to six totems at max because it starts with two, then three points into the duration and health, then one point into grove mine so that uh, he summons five at once instead of summoning six overall. He takes 
uh, one point travel into ancient power for more damage, and then two points into the chance for double damage. This will allow you to do a lot of single target damage. Then two points into armor shred, as since you're doing a lot of physical damage with this, since you're not converting the totem's damage, the armor shred actually works for this. And then three points into speed and range to make your uh, clear feel a lot better. This is actually one of the nodes that actually makes your clear feel amazing for this build. Then three points into Torrent of Thorns for even more projectiles. Two points into Lethal Thicket for crit chance because you're going to need a lot of crit chance with this build. And then one point into Unhollow Core for the Cone Attack. Now he is not grabbing a lot of the more damage on the tree. There's a lot of more damage you can ha you can get. But what he's doing with Thorn Totems is he's focusing them for AoE clear and not for damage. And that is why he went for the speed and range, why he went for the unhollow core, why he went for the projectiles. So this is like nowhere near the amount of damage you could actually do with the totems. You could actually put more points into astral wings, put more points into ancient power, put more points, uh, put another point into impale, and do a significant amount more damage. But like I said, for this build, he doesn't necessarily need it thanks to the fact that storm totem is such a good single target source. He doesn't need single target. Then for ice thorns here, he just has it uh, on. Uh, he just has it on auto. Well, he doesn't have an auto cast. He actually just uh spams it for the the cooldown for the critical kill strike avoidance he just wants to be capped on critical strike avoidance that's the main reason he does this and it also procs thorn totems from thorn totems on hit idols uh he does i don't believe he has the mana sustain to actually put it on autocast but if you do go for a two-handed staff you can take emblem of might instead of one point inside uh bulb shield and you can actually manage to uh put on emblem might and make it cost zero mana and put it on autocast if you do go for the staff version but that's just if you do go staff and then for storm totem this is where all your damage comes from so he takes two points into the shock chance three points into hit damage against shocked enemies he you want that for single target three points into the cast speed travel uh three points into base critical strike chance so your thorn totems i mean so so your storm totems always critting three points into the crit multi one point into the blizzard so you get the blizzard damage aoe for the chills and all that five points into the spell cold damage so he does he has even more flat damage because adaptive damage is very hard to get for totem so that's a very strong node for him then for frenzy totem he just has it with the max range the max hp and duration the max frenzy effect he went for haste on frenzy totem summon so he gets a little bit more movement speed and then just some health regen granted this is pretty much just giving frenzy to your totems and it also increases the frenzy effect per point of attunement he has i believe he has like 40 attunement so he gets like 40 percent increased effect here so he's actually about like 36 percent increased attack and cast speed for your totems pretty strong for this build kind of good then for uh tornado he's actually uh he's not using it for the usual cast speed and movement he's not using it for the attack and cast speed he's actually using it for the tornado uh charge lightning so what he's doing is he's utilizing this to cast lightning at enemies so that it procs his thorn totems because he wants to proc he wants a hundred percent uptime on his thorn totems while he's clearing monoliths while he's doing monoliths like everything arena so you definitely want this and with that being said that's the skills All right, let's talk about passives here. He takes five points into Gift of the Wilderness, one point travel into Natural Attunement, five points into Hunter's Restoration for the HP, uh, five points into Hunter's Emanation for a bunch of increased damage once he procs Hunter's Restoration, I believe. Then six points into Wisdom of the Wild for the increased spell damage for your minions, five points into Berserker for the extra DR on low life so he doesn't die, five points into Elder Branch for Totem Adaptive Spell Damage, uh, just just five extra he's not using an axe then one point into rot bane so that your totems are immune to poison which means they're immune to poison pools which means you can throw them on poison pools and they'll never die which is a very strong thing about totems versus other minion builds because poison pools are definitely one of the main causes of minion deaths in this game uh, then for beast master he takes eight points into earth sign strength for the damage damage reduction five points into boar heart for the damage reduction five points into pork on constitution for even more damage reduction then two points travel into call of the pact then eight points into the chase for the 32 percent increased minion cast speed which is absolutely amazing because there's not that many 
sources of cast speed in the game for your minions. So this makes your minions attack a lot faster. That's why he's actually running Frenzy Totem as well. Then for the Druid, he takes three points to Bark Skin to fill out his Endurance. Just, this is your flex spot. If you have like some Endurance missing, you can just use this to max out your Endurance. Then for Shaman, he's taking eight points into Attunement and Penetration. So you're getting a lot of things from Attunement. You're getting the Frenzy effect. You're getting the damage. And you're getting the Penetration from this node as well. One point Travel into Silent Protector. Eight points into Fate Carver for the increased totem damage increased damage uh five points into totem cast speed which is another increase in damage because the faster they cast the more damage they do two points travel into stormbringer five points into avatar of thunder for this minion spell lightning damage like i said flat damage is very hard to come by with totems one point travel into tempest form i believe you could put this anywhere else it doesn't really matter eight points into rune of awe this is the main node of the build as it gives your minion 16 adapted spell damage absolutely amazing five points into protective circle so he doesn't have to care about fizz res or elemental res this is why he's actually focused on focused so hard on keeping thorn totems up because without thorn totems up he doesn't have ellie res cap and he does not have fizz res cap but if he has this right then that means that he's always capped on these, so he doesn't have to run gear with it on. Then five points into uh, the Lagan's answer for the lightning, so that he can proc Thorn Totems more often with Thorn Totem on hit idols. And then one point into Iron Bark for your totems cannot be stunned. And that's pretty much it for the passive tree. All right, and now for the gearing here. So for idols, his idols are kind of all over the place because he's uh, te he's been testing things. But you want some base critical strike chance for your totem, some minion critical strike chance as much as you can get. You want minion critical strike chance, some chance to summon thorn totem, increased aspect of the boar, so more chance to summon thorn totem. You could probably uh, use base critical strike chance here instead since he has so many ways of hitting that he doesn't need the extra thorn totem uh, chance. Then uh, more critical strike chance, like I said, you just want as much critical strike chance as possible so that your to your totems are always critting. Then he's running a death rattle. This is like S tier for the build because you want... The minion critical strike multiplier because this pretty much doubles your minions damage when they're critting absolutely amazing And it also has the secondary utility purpose of whenever you're spamming thorn totems You actually gain the 30 HP so every single time you summon thorn totems you gain 150 health Which is absolute batshit insane sustain so death rattle is definitely s tier for this build This is one of the necessary components to make this build work then for the helmet He has plus two the thorn totems increased damage for totems uh, adaptive spell damage endurance endurance threshold for his weapon he is using reach of the grave so for the push the arena push he had he did have an exalted tier uh weapon an exalted tier staff that was from back in the day it was a legacy weapon but he says this is just as good and i believe that as well this is just as good or you could go with the two-handed staff for more damage if you want and then he went for a shield with block chance block effectiveness reduced damage taken on block and endurance just for that extra damage reduction layer then for a crit chance with totems adaptive spell damage uh he uh he went for the hp as well when you get your reses fixed you probably want hp there as well probably then for the ring you want minion uh minion damage rings minion damage endurance block chance attunement uh he just has like a shitty dodge rating belt it doesn't matter you don't need the dodge rating but the minion damage endurance endurance uh the attunement minion damage health uh res uh endurance mini damage attunement block chance endurance you just want as much attunement as possible this build increased movement speed attunement critical strike avoidance he does have this uh so the 45 percent from here and the 37 percent from here so i believe he's almost critical strike avoidance capped yeah 82 percent is enough for most content if you're not pushing arena then hybrid health because you want as much health as possible because you can't put uh can't put endurance here uh then of course for his relic attunement Damage, health, res. Uh, he's using this uh, base for the necrotic res. Uh, I believe that's correct. And that's pretty much it. Uh, overall, for the uh, blessings, HP on block, obviously. Uh, critical strike avoidance, very important. Endurance threshold, minion damage for the blessings. That being said, uh, I, I like this build. I think this build has a lot of potential to push even farther in the arena. It's a very fun build if you like totems, but it does come with a upfront investment cost because without 
death rattle. It won't feel good without the base critical strike chance from your t thorn totems uh, for your totems. It won't feel good. So I'd heavily suggest having at the very least the base critical strike chance from one of these relic I mean these idols, and then of course a death rattle before you get into this a well rolled death rattle, and then after that then you should be able to be good to go. And of course obviously as well the adaptive spell damage here is very strong, and same thing with this. So. This build is definitely not a cheap build, but if you want to play totems, this is the best bet for you. With that being said, thank you all for watching, and have a wonderful rest of your day wherever you're at, and bye!